So how are we doing folks? Welcome back to the channel and a continuation of the testing of the Finercy function generators. And on this occasion, I've got the SG-003A, the SG-004A and the LB02 in on the act at the end there as well. So in the previous video that I'll leave a link to in the description box down below, you see I was controlling this little motor inverter here that was controlling the speed of the little motor with the SG-003A, got that all up and running, no problems whatsoever. And I was also reading the current back onto the input of the SG-003A via a voltage signal and converting that to the current. With this setup, I've added in an inductive speed probe that you see just here, and I'm feeding that into the SG-004A. And what I've actually done is set up the SG-004A into converter mode. So it's acting now as a transmitter and it is converting that frequency signal into a 4 to 20 milliamp signal that is being read by the LB02 at the end there. So this is my little inductive probe. It works from 10 to 30 volts. It's actually a cheapie from Amazon, so nothing too extravagant. And you can see here on the motor that I have an actual keyway and the inductive probe is operating off that keyway. You can see the little light is on the back there. As I turn the shaft on the motor, the little light goes out and then comes back on again as the keyway moves past the sensor head. I just swing round onto the actual instruments. So the two that are most interest to us are the Finercy units. I'll just briefly go up through the setup on the SG-003A, but it's exactly the same as I had in the previous video. Uh, if we go to the output that is providing a 4 to 20 milliamp signal out to the motor inverter, you can see that set up there. And if I go down to the range, you can see here the output signal is 4 to 20 milliamps, and that's equivalent to a range of 0 to 1500, which matches the speed on the motor there. And if we just quickly go to the input, you can see this is a voltage input, and we go down to the range. You can see the input is 0 to 10 volts, and I've made that equivalent to 0 to 2 amps. So that's the SG-003A all running there. I have set this up so that the actual RPM is here on the motor, and that's the main aspect I'll be using to control the speed of the motor. On the SG-004 over here, you can see at the top of the input is a frequency input and if we go to input you can see I've set Hertz up this is set as a pulse and if I go down to the range I've set this pulse as 0 to 25 Hertz coming in is equivalent to 0 to 1500 RPM if I just go down to the speed set that's set in RPM with a turns per second of 1 so if we just go back out and if we go to the uh, conversion function first. If we go to function and out, and I, um, the output is set as a milliamp, 4 to 20 milliamps. If I go and oh, let's go down to the range first. So the 4 to 20 milliamps here on the output is set as 0 to 1500 RPM to match the SG 003A. And if we just go across to the main settings menu and we go down to, you can go to convert, and then there's convert function. I've set the input, which is 0 to 25 hertz, to be equivalent to an output of 4 to 20 milliamps. The other aspects that's of interest on this particular screen is to actually switch on the convert mode, which is done by auto run there. And what you have to do is actually set that to a check. Uh, so it goes off there. If I put it back on, that's the check mark there. And then you go back out of the menu and then you actually have to switch the unit off and then back on again and then when that happens you will see hopefully I've got the camera set up right which I haven't just come up a little bit zoom in a little bit more when you've repowered the unit back on you'll get CONV at the top here which indicates that the SG-004A is in conversion mode and is converting the input signal to whatever output signal you have selected. And then at the end there, you can see that the LB02 is set up in four to 20 milliamp mode. And just uh, measuring the current coming out of the SG-004A. 
So the whole object of this is to make sure that the 4 to 20 milliamp signal being put in by the SG-003A should reappear on the LB02 at the end there as exactly the same milliamp signal if everything is working correctly. Unfortunately, I have really struggled to get this to go due to a number of reasons. The first reason is the interference, which I believe is being caused by the inverter. You can see I've got an oscilloscope set up here. It's just set on the input of the SG-003A so it's measuring the switching signal coming from the inductive probe. So what I'll do is, do is just turn on the inverter itself and you can immediately see I've got a fair bit of interference on that screen. And we'll start the motor up and just put a few RPM in on it so you can see the signal. So there you see there the actual um, signal on the oscilloscope that's the switching of the inductive probe and again you can see a fair bit of interference on the actual signal there although the switching lines do look to be fairly sharp um, so we are set to 600 rpm and i'm not sure whether you can see the frequency is 10.04 hertz at the bottom there if i just go down to my instruments you can hopefully see that on the SG-004A I've got 10 Hz coming in that's equivalent to 600 RPM and if we take a look back at the screen on the SG-003A you can see that's reading 600 RPM however the current being put out is 10.40 milliamps unfortunately that does not match the 8 milliamps being shown by the SG-004A so what we'll do is just take the motor up to uh, 700 rpm and you can see the second problem that I'm having now is this is bouncing around a fair bit at 600 rpm that's a nice round figure for the frequency to be calculated by but unfortunately the 700 rpm I've set it to now isn't um, and you see it's flittering between 11 and 12 Hertz uh, and that's equivalent to 660 to 720 rpm now that just appears to be an issue with the SG-004A and the frequency at 700 Hz should be about 11.5 Hz and unfortunately you haven't got the resolution on the SG-004A to display that so it's constantly flickering between the 11 and 12 Hz signal coming in but again if we look at the current that should be 11.466 milliamps for 700 rpm uh, but we're putting out between as it switches 9.6 at the moment 8.8 .8, 9.6 as you see it switching there so again I'm seeing a mismatch in this conversion that I just can't seem to put right so what I'll do is I'll put up this table here and you can see the kind of results that I'm getting uh, the left hand column on the table that's the nominal motor speed and then in the next column we've got the milliamp current being injected by the SG-003A to achieve that speed and then the next three columns are measurements from the SG-004A with the RPM that it's calculating based upon the frequency measurement in Hertz and then the milliamp signal that they is then putting out to the LB02. In the final column on the right hand side you've got the differential between the current being injected by the SG-003A and that being measured by the LB02. As I say if all had gone well they should pretty much match you'd expect in sort of like within two three percent probably but you can see initially the readings are way out uh, the max differential peaks there at 300 rpm which is the sg-003 injecting 7.2 milliamps but only 4.1 milliamps being read on the lb02 in fact all those first three readings all stay at four milliamps being measured from the sg-004a and then from 400 rpm onwards the tolerance starts to get better um, but you can see they are still way out you don't get to within 10 percent tolerance until you're actually at a thousand rpm so that's the table and you can see the difference is a little bit better on this bar graph here if everything had worked correctly you would have seen that each pair of bars would have been equal to one another but you can quite clearly see the difference as you go along for each speed the only reading that you do get that's within spec is when you go up to the full 1500 rpm and as you can see there, I've got 25 hertz, which is right, and it's kicking out 20 milliamps. And everything matches, no problem. 
but that's the only reading that's really giving any accuracy to the system. I can't actually figure out what's wrong with this at this moment in time. However, what I do have that's arrived is a unit from Mr. Signal, which is the MR9270S. So what I'm just going to do is swap over this unit for the SG-004A and see how we get on with that. So hopefully you can see on the two units here, this is the SG-004A. This is the convert function set up and we are on 4 to 20 on the output against a 0 to 25 on the input there. And if we look at the MR9270S, we've got output is 4 to 20 against an input of 0 to 25. So these units are set up exactly the same. So we'll go back to the 600 RPM and switch on. And you can hopefully see here now, we are running on 600 RPM, which is equivalent to the 10.40 amps. And you can see if we look over at the MR9270S, we are running at 10.4 milliamps coming out and a frequency of 10.036 Hertz. So you can see there's a lot more resolution to the frequency input. And the frequency input is converting straight to 600 RPM, just there at the top. And as I said, we've got 10.4 milliamps on there. And if we swing around onto the LB02, 10.429. So pretty good comparison between those two. So we'll just up this to the 700 RPM that the SG-004A struggled with. And you can see with the improved frequency input with the extra resolution, we are now reading 702 RPM on the MR9270S, matching the 700 RPM on the SG-003A. And this is being converted to a current of 11.5152 that's around a little bit um, but it's been 11.51 over there as well that's against uh, calculated 11.466 milliamps on the SG-003A so again quite a good correlation there uh, we'll take it up to the max 1500 and as you can see there 1500 rpm 20 milliamps and we are kicking out 14.94 on the MR9270S and putting out 19.94 milliamps which again going over to the LB02 you can see it matches. This is the results table for the MR2970S conversion uh, pretty much the same format as the previous table for the SG-004A however on the left hand side there I have added in a column for a tachometer reading and then over on the far right hand side is the two columns that we're interested in. Uh, the second column from the right is the comparison of the milliamp signal going in from the SG-003A to the milliamp signal being read by the LB02 after the conversion. And you can see there that all of the readings are less than 2% differential, uh, which is very, very good. Very happy with that one. Um, and in actual fact, there's only five of the readings that are above 1%. So those other 10 readings are actually below 1% differential. And then just over the very last column is the comparison of the TACO reading to the speed calculation from the MR2970S. And you can see that there's only one of those that is over 1%. The 600 RPM reading uh, is 1.1% differential. So yeah, excellent set of results from the MR2970S. Uh, I look forward to doing some more testing on that unit. So it looks like that there's a bit of an issue with the SG-004A and the way the signal conversion is working. It certainly doesn't seem to be working the way I expected to with this inverter, but the MR9270S is functioning as I expect with exactly the same setup. So whilst playing around with these instruments a little bit more, you can see I've got everything kind of propped up against a box here that the oscilloscope is sat on. And I've got my little Vera ratchet here set up strategically in front of the meters. What you find with the Finersi instruments is that they sit there quite nicely. Um, there's no problem with these slipping around, the construction of them, and this rubber molding 
uh, makes it quite grippy against this surface, no problems. Uh, the actual MR9270S is the same as well, it's got this rubberized outer jacket. Um, but our little LB02 is already trying to escape, and if I take the Zyklops straight out of the way, you can see it just wants to slide around. There's no rubberized coating on this, uh, which makes it uh, a little bit mischievous at times. So it's just something to bear in mind if you're out on plant. Um, the nature of this case, it will slip and slide around. Uh, what I've also found happen as well with the SG-003A, um, we'll take these two out and we'll take him out. I'm not sure, it's only happened to this blue jack here. Uh, hopefully if we can show you, um, it's become loose and it's rattling around there. Um, so not sure how it's fixed in. I'll have to strip this down and see what the issue is, whether it's just a nut that's come loose. It hasn't happened on any of the other jacks and it hasn't happened on the SG-004A. So I'm not 100% sure what's going wrong. Hopefully it'll just fix up okay. Uh, it's just one of those things that happens occasionally. Uh, but that will be it for this video. A uh, bit disappointing, but thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I will see you again in the next one.